Picture it. November 2014. Wait, 2014? Holy flip, has it really been seven years since... Wait, never mind. Continuing. Picture it. November 2014. The One World Center in New York officially opens after its Twin Tower predecessors fell in the US 9-11 attack. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West tied the knot in Italy, signaling the start of a very interesting empire in pop culture. And The Force Awakens is officially revealed to be the title for the upcoming new seventh installment Star Wars movie. Brought to you by Lucasfilm, bought for you by Disney. All these events were groundbreaking along with other real world politics happening at the time, but none event was as extraordinary, as shocking, and as anticipated as the ending of the Naruto series written by Masashi Kishimoto that's been going on for 15 years. Welcome to Day Day Does, a channel where you basically watch me draw and talk about fandom slash storytelling things. Originally, I was going to post a video about the diversity problem in fiction because I love diversity and I love fiction, but not everyone seems to like the two together. But upon responding to a comment on my last video of Cesarin's canon controversy, shout out to Abigail, y'all, it got me thinking of my time during the Naruto ship war of 2014. I have to say it's arguably one of the most insane toxic displays of shipping that I had ever encountered. So now Naturally, I thought, why not record my experience and being caught up in the middle of the action? Now, warning, spoilers ahead, so if you have not seen or read Naruto or Naruto Shippuden, you might want to click off this video. If you don't care, welcome. Also, I'm prefacing this video with an important disclaimer of sorts. I will not go into details about any one ship in a negative light. I have strong opinions about certain ships that I've yet to get over in the year of our lore 2021. If you saw my Cesarin video, you'd know what I'm talking about. Those opinions will see the light of day in another video another day, but for right now, I'm just going to be an objective narrator looking into the wilds of fandom land, specifically the Naruto ship herd. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's continue. First published in Shueisha's magazine, Weekly Shonen Jump from September 21, 1999, Naruto literally swept the rising nation with its bubbly rascal-like ninja underdog. Along with him were the introductions of his teammates, cute, smart, normie Sakura Haruno and hot emo founder Sasuke Uchiha. Along with their delicious looking lazadaisical sensei Kakashi Hataki, who's tasked in making sure that these kids don't die and basically teaching them the ninja way. Now, the story concept was simple. Shunned boy dreams of becoming the strongest ninja leader of his village so that he can be respected and look up to. Along the way, he makes friends with other ninja kids, both inside the village and out. Most of which are boys, since this is a shonen genre and the mangaka artist Masashi Kishimoto admits that he sucks at writing girls. So the girls in the friend group, along with Sakura, would be a grand smacking total of four. You got Ino, Tenten, and Hinata four girls to eight boys. And considering that the series Naruto ended up surprising everyone by how popular it was for the girl demographic, it was only natural that the common phenomenon of shipping, i.e. when someone wants two particular characters to end up together for whatever personal reason, would end up occurring. And occur it did, and it was wild. The most popular ships were Sasu Naru, which is Sasuke and Naruto, Sasu Saku, which is Sasuke and Sakura, Naru Saku, which is Naruto Sakura, and Naru Hina, which was Naruto and Hinata. Those were the four most popular. There were a couple of others, but for the sake of the war, the main ones in the spotlight were these four in particular. In part one of Naruto, when all the characters are mostly 12 to 13 years old, things were pretty harmless for the most part. The characters were still young and so many new characters were being introduced in every arc. Fans began picking their favorite characters and coupling up a few. I was mostly able to tell because at the time in 2006, I lurked around the interwebs and fanfiction.net and discovered a bevy of ships from strange cute ones like Gara and Hinata that low-key work to like really weird favorites like Kakashi and Guy. Any characters you wanted together and it was there for the taking. I was secretly partial to the Itachi and Sakura ship, but around 2016, Sasuke and Sakura was a popular favorite that had a lot of content out there. It also helped that with the way the manga and anime were going, the Sasuke Saku ship was most likely going to become canon by the end of the series. Same goes for the Naruto and Hinata ship. A lot of people were gravitating towards the stuttering, shy, moon-eyed girl with a huge ass crush on underdog Naruto. So because 
because they adored her and liked the ship dynamic, a lot of people wanted Naruto endgame for her. And if Sakura, Naruto's crush, was currently occupied with Sasuke, then a logical conclusion would be that Hinata would end up with Naruto by the end of the series if nothing changed. And that was fine for a lot of people. Then part two happened, Shippuden, and everything went to shit. The cast of Naruto grew older by like two or three years, and innocent cute shipping dreams suddenly felt more tangible, which meant the stakes were higher and it was anyone's game. Now, the tension between Naruhina and Narusaku around 2007 and beyond grew. As symbolic and cute as Sasu Naru was, realistically, it wasn't going to be endgame. Maybe if Masashi Kishimoto left the ending open-ended, you could do something with that. But knowing how it was being portrayed during the mainstream media, the brother bond the two shared wasn't really going to morph into like lovers officially. So Sasuke was pretty much out. That left Hinata and Sakura as possible endgame. Karin, if you wanted to be optimistic, but there wasn't a lot of support for that ship. Now, Hinata seemed like she had a very strong chance because her crush for Naruto was unwavering during the time skip, but then so did Sakura, because our boy Naruto is a one-track mind he is. So Sakura was pretty much the heroine of the story. She was the female teammate, part of Team 7, Naruto's crush since he was like 7 or 8. He constantly raves about his love for her and even chooses to get Sasuke back for her if it'd make her happy. All the signs pointed to this pairing. There was a lot of similarities between Naruto's mother and Sakura, the gutsy ninja book that Jiraiya wrote that Naruto is named after that paralleled Sakura and Naruto. Even the promo for the series in Japan had a lot of merch with the two. Hinata, in comparison, had very little interaction with Naruto throughout the series, but she was given a moment to confess during the Pain arc in Shippuden. It never received any response from Naruto after Pain was defeated, but it was enough for a lot of the Naruhina shippers. The support Hinata had was monumental for a supporting secondary character, and sometimes that was enough. Studio Period, I think that's how I'm pronouncing the name, the animation studio that made Naruto was also a fan of Hinata, and you could see that through the fillers. The way they animated her and the amount of screen time she got and the various other things, she even got a whole last movie about her and Naruto. Her favoritism got to the point that a lot of the Western audience was in total favor of Hinata's happy ending. Thus, the tension between the Narusaku and Naruhina factions grew considerably to the point it was almost like a Sakura versus Hinata scenario. I would add the Sasuke and Sakura fandom too, but they were mostly joined together or automatically lumped with the Naruhina faction and the real fight just seemed to be between the two girls over Naruto rather than the boys over Sakura. It was almost crazy though how much baiting there was even from like Masashi Kishimoto himself. Like towards the end of the war arc there was a constant tug of war. Will it be Sakura? Hinata? Who knows? Certainly not Masashi Kishimoto. Sakura got moments when Minato asked if she was Naruto's girlfriend and the boy didn't even deny and neither did Sakura, which was not helping the situation. She also had the CPR scene of holding Naruto's heart, which was a whole lot of symbolism in and of itself, being there by his side when he finally did rise to consciousness after that whole revelation of like, oh, Sasuke and Naruto are reincarnations of so-and-so. Hinata, I believe, just got her life saved by Neji, which led to the hand-holding scene. And then a couple of pan shots of her being worried about him and I think that was pretty much it. There wasn't really much. Literally Masashi was not helping to spell anything or being decisive in any way which would have helped quell and prepare everyone for chapters 699 and 700 which were the last two chapters that ended the Naruto series officially and when the Naruto ship were exploded. So if we want to blame anybody about anything it would be Masashi. When chapters 699 and particularly 700 dropped it was the worst of times and the greatest of times for so many people. Those who were against the Naruhina ship were shocked that the end game pairing that won canonicity was Naruhina. Seeing the canon kids and just how the denouement played out in chapter 700 in particular was very eye-opening. Criticism and skepticism was hurled at the ending, many in disbelief and in doubt that this was even a real chapter that Kishimoto drew himself. Seriously. There were discussions about how the art was off, how the whiskers on the Naruto kids proved they were fan-made, and how there was so many instances of retcon, etc. So many could not believe that this was how it was ending, me included, not gonna lie. On the other side of the coin though, so many Naruhina fans were beyond ecstatic that Hinata won her happily ever after. The celebration and joy was endless because finally their girl got her mans and had kids to boot. It signaled a beacon of hope for shy girls everywhere that yes, miracles do happen. Hell, Studio Peria being the captain of the Naruhina ship even made a whole ass movie called Naruto The Last, which was basically about Naruto and Hinata 
about hooking up. It was great for those that enjoyed it and pure horror for those that didn't. Around that time, the Boruto series was also announced, which only further added fuel to an already toxic fire. So much analyzing, so much retconning, so much hate towards the people that didn't like the ship, hate towards those that did like it. It just seemed like everyone had something to say about the ending. Those that were just glad and sad that the series was over were very few and rarely heard about. Sadly, as much as a lot of people didn't want it to happen, Naruhina and other related ships were canon and there was nothing they could do about it. And with that, you would think that that would be the end of it, but apparently not. The opposing factions that rejected the Naruto ending retained their enjoyment of their ships, refusing to support what followed after for the Naruto franchise. During the Thank You Kishimoto virtual card signing that I think Shonen Jump set up so that fans can express their thanks to him for all his hard work, a lot of people were able to add their favorite Naruto pictures and a few heartfelt words that would be translated into Japanese for him. Around the Narusaku part of the world, I saw several posts with pictures of Naruto and Sakura and people talking about their appreciation for the duo's bond and same with a lot of other ships. Then there was the hate expressed to Kishimoto over the ending. It literally got to the point that the people in charge of the event had to moderate future thank you cards because unhappy people were bashing the shit out of that man, calling him names, sending him not so flattering pictures of Naruto and other characters and some even threatening the man if he didn't make a certain ship canon. And all this happened just before the final chapters were dropped. So around the time when the last was being announced, I believe. If anyone's got a more accurate time, let me know. But like, holy flip, no wonder the Western audience is kept away from manga artists with like a 10 foot pole. There's some crazy ass bitches out there. Like enthusiasm and love for a series is great, fantastic, a 10 out of 10 dream, but people be taking this shit way too far. Eventually though, life continued, but for those that didn't like how the canon material ended, fan fiction and fan art became a place of refuge. And something that I found particularly fascinating was the community of the Narusaku coming together to form their own headcanons and fan-made kids after rejecting Boruto. Shinachiku, Hanami, and Arashi were the most popular and widely accepted Naruto slash Sakura kids in the community. Many coming together to agree on a general consensus of headcanons for them and draw tons of fan art, fan comics, and fan fiction about them. Tomo, I think is how you say her name. Um, she is a Naruto Sasuke love child, which was another popular fan made kid. Don't ask me the specifics of her because I don't know how she came to be, but only that she appeared and stayed ever since. There's even a Narusaku Zine that comes out every year that you can purchase, as well as many fan art prompts that pop up around April 3rd, which is the day Naruto fell in love with Sakura, according to the Ninja Data calendar published by Shonen Jump. So a lot of this coming together was actually pretty nice. And it's something that I've noticed that happens every year without fail, which is kind of nice when you think about it, just like a group of people coming together and just celebrating something they love. However, some Naruhina and Sasu Sakura shippers do not actually appreciate this rebellion and rejection of canon materials because the next thing anyone actually knows is that a lot of people's fan arts are being stolen and traced over with amateur renditions of Naruhina content or Sasu Saku content. Long rants were being posted on Tumblr, the tags were being invaded with negativity and the bashing of these nonconformists were publicized on the YouTube and Facebook space. You literally could not like anything non-canon or you'd be told to kill yourself. Like I'm telling y'all, these were some wild fucking times. Eventually, though, the hate kind of became less, not because they didn't accept what was going on, but more like time makes people kind of move on to other things. Of course, every now and then, if you stare at any ship art for long, you'll find some kind of hateful comment underneath it. That's just, at this point, a fact of life. So the moral of this historical recapture was that I had hoped with time and maturity, people would realize that being a dick towards internet strangers isn't exactly a power move. Ship dynamics is literally one of the most subjective tastes fiction has to offer. It changes constantly from franchise to franchise and that's completely okay. At the end of the day, it's all fiction and there's always something better to do. At last, we've come to the end of this video. Links appropriate to this video will be placed in the description box below. Let me know if you have any agreeing or disagreeing thoughts in the comments. However, remember, be respectful. We're human beings here. Or if you have extra information to add or an insane ship story to tell, trust me, I would love to hear it. Drop me a line, please. My fan art in this video will be finished and posted on Instagram, DeviantArt, and wherever else. All links will be in the description box below. So check it out if you dare. That's pretty Pretty much my memory on the Naruto Ship Wars of 2014. Don't forget to like or unlike this video and subscribe to my channel as well as click the bell to get notified whenever I upload my next great thing. Until next time y'all, cheers.